What is going on guys? Matt Downs with Daily Grind Fantasy Sports to help give you the edge for this NBA playoff slate. It is a four game slate on DraftKings. Cannot wait to break it down. If you guys are brand new to this channel, we provide both free and paid content for all daily fantasy sports across all sports. If you could please show your support by hitting that subscribe button, notification bell, and of course smashing that like button for all of our future NBA content. If you would like to know more about becoming a better DFS player and taking down that big GPP, head over to www.patreon.com slash dgfantasy for more information. On Patreon, we give advanced cheat sheets for all DFS sports on DraftKings. These cheat sheets include updated projections, ownership, and our overall favorite plays from slate to slate. We take it a step further by teaching you how to play fantasy sports like a shark, by showing you where the best leverage spots are to put you in the best spots to take down tourneys. Also included is our private Discord chat where you get to talk over the slate with everyone, including our coaches, to help build your lineups. Now let's go ahead and dive right into this NBA four game playoff slate. But first, you guys know we have to go over some Patreon success um, before we start this weekend off. Uh, we had some Patreon success on the Indiana Washington game. If you guys see our members profited, did uh, triple ups and GPPs. Something we always preach on Patreon is to play smaller contests because that will yield a higher rate of return if you guys are selecting contests right and um, not throwing all your money to these big GBPs where it's just like entering the lottery at that point. You know, first first place wins $100,000, sure, but there's 90,000 people in there. It makes absolutely no sense. And plus, DraftKings takes more of a rate percentage from those contests. Uh, I also uh, won a small GBP yesterday in CSGO, turned $50 into $250, 33 $33 into $90, and then I didn't cash in my GBPs because these were a uh, very contrarian lineup, whereas this was a very chalky lineup, and because of that, I took down that small GBP. Uh, we also had another takedown here, $165 one on CSGO. Yes, we also cover esports on our Patreon. Uh, another GBP winner here, $87. I can keep going down the list. We had some more Super Draft success here. Uh, he always plays a quarter contest and turned a quarter into 25 bucks. Looks like, uh, you know, he, he, he cashed pretty hard here um and the the first through all the way through uh, 54 there um also turn 80 dollars into 160 dollars utilizing our mlb cheat sheet yes we provide mlb if you guys are interested in signing up for patreon uh, it's only 20 dollars a month it gives you access to all of our leverage sheets for every single major sport including esports mlb nba playoffs golf nhl you guys name it we have it we cover it on patreon.com slash dg fantasy also i will be giving away a free prize pick entry at the very end of this video my favorite um, prize pick entry if you guys haven't signed up for prize picks and their code using dgf i will give you guys a free entry into that contest 100 percent matchup to 100 dollars when using our promo code it's just free money if you guys are struggling on DraftKings, fanduel super draft etc go ahead and give prize picks a look because it's selecting literally the over or under of a certain projection the fantasy point projection and then if it hits it hits you win money so that simple head over to prize picks today and their code dgf when signing up also uh, this slate, four games, guys. Let's go ahead and dive right into this this uh, NBA slate. Really no massive injuries to hone in on, which I love to see. This is playoffs. Every single player is in playoff mode. Um, so think of superstars with, with very high minutes, very thin rotations all the way around. We're not going deep into the bench bench rotations here for any one of these teams. So let's focus. Let's just go over the, the quick injury report here. Miami, Milwaukee, nothing really going on. Uh, the Nassus is technically out, but he doesn't really play that many minutes regardless. He plays maximum of about 10 minutes a game, so really shouldn't impact the minutes here on the team whatsoever. With Dallas, J.J. Redick is out again, another player that doesn't eat into minutes. Shouldn't really impact this Dallas picture at all. Clippers, nothing going on. Boston still without Jalen Brown. That's a bit of injury news that we really have to pay attention to. Plus, they are in the pace of spot here versus Brooklyn. Brooklyn doesn't really have any anybody out. Right now, Shaman is technically probable. And then with Portland, we have Zach Collins and Denver. Denver... Uh, Will Barton and Dozier are officially out, so that will impact the picture there a little bit with Denver. That is the late night hammer here starting at 1030. Other than that, though, pretty clean injury report, and I am very excited to start breaking down these NBA playoffs. Should be a good one. Um, there's some great matchups here starting already. Miami, Milwaukee, Dallas, Clippers. Really, all these matchups are very, very good. I could see this going either way with maybe the exception of Boston, uh, Brooklyn. That's a little bit more one-sided, but I mean, regardless, they should all be great games, so cannot wait to break it down. Let's go game by game, guys, and at the very end, I will start piecing together my favorite plays into a DraftKings lineup, maybe give you guys a core just to show where my head's at. 
But starting with this very first game here, Miami-Milwaukee. Let's start on the Miami side with Jimmy Butler. He is priced at 8.4K. That is just really, really low for a star player of his caliber. Um, he's probably my third favorite superstar on the slate, and the other two options really aren't that standout-ish. So I, I do like uh, Jimmy Butler here, projected 36 minutes. He should be playing the entirety of the game, 5.1 point per dollar value. Don't mind him here in this spot against Milwaukee. They will need him today, and they are technically an underdog this should be a competitive game so jimmy butler very low price tag here point per dollar wise he looks fantastic averaging over 1.33 fantasy points on the season definitely like him here especially with him projected 36 minutes which is above his average uh iguodala not that bad of a, a price tag here 3k projected uh, 22 minutes they're gonna need him today defensively so that's another thing to consider definitely consider him more of a gpp play just because he's only projected 22 minutes i could definitely see him playing upwards of 25 to 28 uh, again if he stays in this game to cover somebody like Giannis they're going to need him defensively and he presents a lot of uh, veteran presence here on this floor so don't mind that at a 3k price tag if you're looking for a salary saver definitely don't hate that should carry very low ownership also, some other noteworthy guys like Drogic, 4.9K, uh, passes the eye test there. Pretty cheap. Ch uh, Trevor Ariza, 4.7K. Bam out of the bio, not that bad of an option, 8.3K. But these guys are just going to be GPP worthy. Uh, Jimmy Butler, definitely cash viable, 8.4K. They're going to need him today, projected those minutes. And then Iguodala, I can consider him cash viable depending on what you do with the rest of your lineup and lineup construction. But those are by far my favorite options. Drogic, Ariza, projected tw uh, 32 minutes at a 4.7K price tag. Definitely don't hate for GBPs uh, given his price tag and upside with minutes. Switching over to the Milwaukee side, I don't like this side as much just because these guys are pretty priced accordingly. Uh, we saw DiVincenzo about 5 to 6K throughout the season, 5.1K now. Still projected as normal minutes. He got a bump slightly from 28 to 31 minutes. Um, I don't hate him. I just think that all these guys are going to be relatively low on because we know Miami historically is a very good defensive team. Uh, if you guys think back to Milwaukee during the regular season, they're projected to about 120 to 122 ish points per game. Now that they're playing Miami, that's about a four point difference are only projected 116 points this is playoff mode so it, it does affect their pace a little bit uh, more and they are playing at home so 116 points not too bad i'm just not as bullish as i am um, for them as I am on the other side there with Jimmy Butler. Brooke Lopez, 4.5K, going to be GPP worthy. Giannis, you can't hate them, but 10.7K really isn't that much of a difference from the regular season in terms of price tag. And then Drew Holiday, way too expensive for me. Same thing with Chris Middleton, 8.1K, 7.7K. You can get a lot more superstar power. Like To compare him, uh, Chris Middleton, to Jimmy Butler, the price tag difference is only $300, and you know what kind of usage you're getting from Jimmy Butler. And Chris Milton only averages 1.14 fantasy points per minute on this season. So I like Jimmy Butler a lot more than guys like Chris Milton and Giannis for just a value perspective. Going down the list here, uh, I can say the exact same thing for Dallas here. Uh, not thrilled with the pace of the game. Josh Richardson does look okay. 4.3K, very cheap. Projected 28 minutes. Comes out to a 5.4 point per dollar value. But really only GPP plays all the way around. Like, I'm not really that confident in Luka here. 10.5K, yes, he is a great superstar in a playoff matchup. But again, 10.5K, he got the price increase from the regular season, which we are not used to seeing here when looking up and down at all these price tags. So, Luka Don Donkic doesn't really appeal me too much. Just a GPP play for me. Same thing with Porzingis, 8.1K. That's about where he was during the regular season. Um, just all GPP plays here from Dallas. I'm not thrilled about the price tags all the way around. And they're only projected to score 107 points. This is the lowest over under. And the Clippers are favored by 5 points. Speaking of the Clippers, let's switch over to the other side. I absolutely love the Clippers for value. Just looking at all these price tags, they are all way too underpriced. They're projected to score 112 points. Yes, it's not the best matchup for Dallas, but like Kawhi Leonard, a superstar for only 8K. He is technically cheaper than Jimmy Butler, and I like him a little bit more just in terms of price tag. Um, but Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, my favorite value superstars on the slate. And then Paul George throw into the mix as well. 7.8K averages 1.25 points on the season. They're both projected 36 minutes. If you're playing GPPs, take a stab at either one of these guys for cash. I don't mind a stack. Possibly Jimmy Butler, Kawhi Leonard, and Paul George if you can make that work. And you can make that work, especially with guys like Patrick Beverly on the board. Only 3.3K projected 24 minutes. I don't mind that. Averaging 0.78 fantasy points per minute on the season. Comes up to a 5.8 point per dollar value. So right off the rip, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Patrick Beverly I consider all cash viable. It is now the playoffs. And Patrick Beverly, they will need his defense and these playoffs. 
Other GBP options are going to be Nick Batum, 25 projected minutes, not that high on him. Reggie Jackson, also a good fantasy point per minute player, averaging over one fantasy points per minute with these guys. But when comparing Reggie Jackson to Pat Bev, uh, 24 projected minutes, and he is projected to start this game at $3,300. Just do like him slightly more since he is getting that starter uh, role and projected starter minutes. But nonetheless, let's go down here to the Boston Celtics versus Brooklyn Nets. Boston really the only team uh, benefiting without a huge piece of injury news, and that's with Jalen Brown. He is out the remainder of the season, unfortunately. But for them, they do all get a usage boost. If we take a look at the usage board here, I crunched what the Boston Celtics look like without Daniel Tyson, both Jalen Brown off the court. Uh, Jason Tatum here, 35 uh, percent usage averaging 1.41 fantasy points per minute so definitely a lot of superstar power with a lot of usage there with jason tatum the only thing with jason tatum is he's slightly more than the other superstars that we were talking about 10.1k is it worth it i say yes but he's definitely going to be a little bit lower owned than some of these other mid value superstars like jimmy butler like paul george and Kawhi leonard so i consider him more gbp viable 39 minutes so he is going to be playing the entire game and they will need him against brooklyn if this game does get out of hand he might not see the entire fourth quarter but if you pay up for a guy like jason tatum it's going to limit you in other spots and it's definitely going to limit you in terms of lineup construction another guy that i absolutely love for value probably one of my my favorite value plays on the entire slate is going to be robert williams he is expected to play today and they're going to need him here versus the brooklyn nets uh, 4.9k averaging 1.23 fantasy points per minute that is absolutely insane 24 projected minutes um, i could easily see him playing over 20 four minutes like i said they're gonna need him um he comes out to the best point per dollar value on the entire slate so there is my favorite value play 4.9k pace up spot everything makes sense for robert williams assuming he does start and play those full minutes of about 24 to 28 ish minutes kimba walker not that bad of an option if you want to pivot off of somebody like uh jimmy butler they're going to need Kemba Walker just as much as Jason Tatum today. 36 projected minutes. He's probably my second favorite option in terms of star play on the Boston Celtics. Uh, don't mind him. I think he'll carry a decent amount of ownership coming out to a 5.7 point per dollar value when you take just uh, Jalen Brown off the court. Kemba Walker's averaging 1.19 fantasy points per minute, so definitely don't hate that. And then, of course, Evan Fournier, definitely more of a GPP option. We love shooters and high-paced uh, spots. Evan Fournier has come to full form here recently, averaging 1.92 fantasy points per minute, uh, projected 36 minutes, uh, a decent amount of upside there. If he if, if he gets it going and gets it going pretty quickly, uh, could easily pay off that price tag of 6.2K, 5.6 point per dollar value. We've already uh, talked about Jason Tatum. And then Marcus Smart, I'm not that big of a fan of him. If you ask me who I prefer uh, in terms of like a ranking system for the Celtics, it's going to be Robert Williams, Jason Tatum, Kemba Walker, Fournier, and then Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart just hasn't shown his true potential here in terms of offensive firepower, especially with Jalen Brown off the court, only averaging 0.89 fantasy points per minute on the season. So not a huge fan of uh, Marcus Smart. Uh, but I do like these Boston Celtics in terms of upside. If they can keep it close, then I absolutely love these guys. I think one of these guys will have a ceiling game. It's probably going to be Jason Tatum or Kemba Walker. But I love Robert Williams for that value play from the Boston Celtics. Next on the list, we're going to talk about the flip side here with the Brooklyn Nets. Not too intrigued in terms of the value here, but I do like these guys for GPPs only. Uh, Brooklyn, during the regular season when all three of these superstars were playing, all of them were carrying very low ownership, and one of them, one of the three every single game, had a ceiling game. So one of these guys will break the slate. It's just a matter of choosing who. Uh, Kevin Durant. James Harden, Kyrie Irving, take a stab at any one of them. Uh, my favorite, just because he's been performing pretty well as of late, is going to be Kevin Durant. And he does have a good matchup, especially against these Boston Bigs. He's going to be playing that power forward position down low. So don't mind Kevin Durant. He's going to be my favorite option here from the Brooklyn Nets. But James Harden, Kyrie Irving have just as much upside, if not more. James Harden just hasn't played in a, in a long time. So still shaking off some rust there, I'm, I'm assuming. It is James Harden, and he is 10.3K, so pretty intriguing on the surface. Blake Griffin, also not that bad of an option, 4.4K. And when we take a look at his usage, uh, let me go ahead and just make sure I have it exactly right. Averaging 1.02 fantasy points per minute since being on this Brooklyn roster, which is pretty darn good at a 4.4K price tag and projected 24 minutes. So coming off the bench, just a GPP option for me, but I definitely don't hate uh, Blake Griffin. But the rest of these guys, just GPP options. Like you can take a stab at guys like Claxton, only projected 16 minutes uh, Bruce Brown projected 19 minutes but my favorite options on the slate all three of these superstars just GPP options and of course Blake Griffin averaging 
that uh, good fantasy point projection. <clears throat> Last but not least is this Blazers versus Denver matchup. Yet another great matchup. They are technically without Zach Collins. Doesn't really impact the usage or minutes from these guys. More just GPP options for me. Damian Lillard and the, and the playoffs we know does perform, so I don't hate it. Uh, but 9.4K, again, when you just compare that superstar power to these other uh, these other superstars on the slate, I won't name them all because I already have. 9.4K is just more than uh, than those other superstars. So don't like that from a value perspective. McCollum, 7.9K. I don't hate for GBPs, but these guys are really just all GBP options to me. doesn't really make sense for these guys. It's not very straightforward. And they all should carry very low ownership with them being the last game on the slate. And then with Denver, uh, these guys make a little bit more sense, but still not too much more sense. Uh, Compazzo, 34 projected minutes, and I like him. He's been co coming to true form here as of late. 5.2K, 34 minutes. And when you look at his floor, other than this last game, you can just exclude this because he only played 14 minutes. Like all these games, he's been hitting value at a 5-point 2k price tag he only really has to get to about 26 to 27 fantasy points and he's been hitting that pretty consistently so i don't know what his ownership's going to be looking like but i really do like him for value 5.2k if he carries low ownership then i consider him a great gbp option they are projected to score 114 points this is a pace up spot for denver they are technically a favorite at home by one single point so i definitely don't mind Capazzo there i i consider him cash viable just in terms of value but again i, I don't expect him to carry that huge of an ownership tonight monte morris uh plug and play uh 21 projected minutes thirty three hundred dollars just a shooter in the high pace spot um he's not a very efficient player from a fantasy point perspective but i definitely don't mind him just with him being a shooter uh Jokic, can Jokic, obviously in the in the running for a uh, mvp candidate now 35 projected minutes 10.6k definitely don't hate it and presents a very good matchup against the trailblazers so um, probably my other favorite option in terms of pay up options on the slate uh, between him, Donkic, and like Damian Lillard. I'm gonna prefer Jokic. He's been very consistent this season, and they are going to need him and presents a very good matchup against the Portland Trailblazers. But now I'm gonna do something a little bit differently. Let's actually put some of my favorite value plays and just all my, my overall favorite plays into a lineup and start building a lineup. I haven't done this. I have never switched over to the DraftKings board just because I prefer Fantasy Cruncher's dashboard and just sifting through all the value plays going game by game and all that so let's actually do it let's put Composo, robert williams they're my favorite value plays on the slate if i go all games Composo, let's put him we'll put him at point guard sure uh robert williams all right and Kawhi leonard let's see if we can get Kawhi leonard let's get jimmy butler hmm Okay, and then let's go ahead and put Paul George in there. Oh, we can make that happen. With $5,200 left, let's actually take a look back at the board. Oh, Pat Bev. We can get Pat Bev in there. Beverly. Okay. And power forward and util. So what kind of power forwards are we looking at here? Blake Griffin's good. Andre Iguodala. Kevin Durant, if you want to pay up. There's no really mid-range options. You know what? Let's try to get Jason Tatum in there. I highly doubt that's going to give us any money left. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, Tatum. I can't believe... Uh, TJ's is going to see this part of the video and just hate me because I'm fading uh, Tatum for my for my main line. But guys, look at look at the superstars here so far. So Composo, but Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and Jimmy Butler in the same lineup. That is terrifying. Uh, let's get... You want... Let's put Iguodala in there. I like Iguodala today, especially given the matchup. Iguodala. Okay, and then 94 left over. We can put Damien. <laughs> that's a pretty good lineup, I'm just saying. Uh, that's a good GBP lineup as of right now. But guys, you can make it happen. And like I said, all of these mid-range superstars present a lot of upside today. Wow, that's actually a very good lineup. I might not want to give that to you guys. Anyway, uh, guys... I'm going to switch over to the prize pick board. Let's actually do that right now. And there is a huge, huge mispricing here with Paul George at 40 points right now. We haven't projected over that 40 point mark. I will show you guys exactly what it is here in a second. 
We can find this team. Yeah, we have them projected right now. 45 DraftKings points. So 40 to 45. And again, FanDuel, uh, it is FanDuel scoring. So it's around uh, 43 to 44-ish points. But still, we haven't projected to hit the over. And that will wrap up my video, guys. Hopefully, you did enjoy this video. If you did, please do it that subscription button, notification bell, and of course, smash that like button for all of our future NBA content. With all that being said, have a great rest of your day. Let's cash.